Well, joining us now is in Focus Health correspondent Lino Mudu with news of yellow fever, tuberculosis and of course much more. Lino. Hello Vincent. Well, Uganda Ministry of Health is reporting an outbreak of yellow fever in the country. The disease has killed approximately 50 people since November and infected close to 200 in the northern part of the country. Health officials say yellow fever is recurring in Uganda after almost 40 years. The Ministry of Health is taking measures to fight the mosquito, born, uh, the mosquito spread disease in partnership with the World Health Organization and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control. Scientists say they have found a new method for detecting tuberculosis, guess what, an African rat. Researchers at Apopo, a Tanzania-based research facility, say the sniffing powers of the African pouched rat can help detect TB in samples more efficiently and at a lower cost than lab technicians using micro microscopes. Investigators conducted a head-to-head -head comparison of the rodent's ability to smell TB against the skills of lab technicians testing more than 10,000 samples. They say the rats were 44% more successful at detecting the disease than the technicians. Experts increasingly believe that vitamin D has a multidimensional role in promoting health. Research is now showing that vitamin D can affect more, most every part of the body and lower the risk for many diseases, including cancer. Voice of America's Vidushi Sina has more. Newborns are known to be at higher risk for respiratory infections. Now new research led by Massachusetts General Hospital found a link between low vitamin D in infants and respiratory infections. The research found that wheezing can worsen in early childhood if infants have low levels of vitamin D. But it stops short of confirming a link with chronic asthma. Doctors are also finding connections between vitamin D and healthy pregnancies. Another recent study has shown that pregnant women can reduce their chances of birth-related complications if they take 4,000 international units of vitamin D every day. Dr. Michael Erwig at George Washington University Medical School lectures frequently on vitamin D. There have been some studies showing that if you give pregnant women 4,000 units of vitamin D a day, their uh, rates of, um, of complications in pregnancy are much decreased. So if you look at things like infection, preterm delivery, even gestational diabetes is all reduced with giving uh, pregnant women higher doses of vitamin D. Routine prenatal vitamins do not provide enough vitamin D according to the study conducted by Massachusetts General and University of Colorado at Denver. It found that 7 out of every 10 pregnant women in the United States are not getting enough vitamin D. Also women with darker skin, those who cover their skin for religious and cultural reasons and those living in areas with longer winter months are at risk for low vitamin D. That's because vitamin D is produced by our bodies when we absorb sun through our skin. Many people also block sunlight with sunscreen, and some of the vitamin D ingested gets trapped in body fat and is therefore unavailable. Doctors say many people don't have enough vitamin D. Vitamin D has become a very hot topic in medicine now as we're discovering very high levels of vitamin D deficiency in our population, not only in the United States but worldwide. Vitamin D is also essential for the body's absorption of calcium. The U.S. Institute of Medicine recommends that infants should receive 400 units of vitamin D per day, the others about 600 units. And it recommends that people 71 or older could need 800 units per day. Vidushi Sinha, VOA News, Washington. It is well known that smoking is bad for your health, but just how bad? Three new studies about cigarette smoking show it is even more harmful than was previously thought. Voice of America's Carol Pearson reports. U.S. Surgeon General Regina Benjamin recently issued a statement on the impact tobacco smoke has on the human body. This report concludes that damage from tobacco smoke is immediate. Dr. Benjamin said smoke enters the bloodstream quickly and affects every organ. She said even occasional smoking or breathing other people's smoke can lead to serious illness or death. One cigarette or the exposure to some secondhand smoke may cause a heart attack. 
Dr. Benjamin told people who are trying to quit not to give up. Smoking cigarettes is common in the military, especially in war zones. Military veterans who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder often turn to tobacco for help in regaining an even mood. That's what Walter Williams did when he served in Vietnam. Well, I started to smoke in the military. It seemed to be what everybody was doing. Professor Miles McFall and Dr. Andrew Saxon from the Veterans Affairs Hospital in Seattle studied more than 900 veterans. Doctors treated half of the veterans for post-traumatic stress syndrome, or PTSD, while also treating them for their smoking habit. The other half were treated for PTSD, but went to a separate program to quit smoking. Veterans who received the integrated care um, intervention from their mental health clinician in the PTSD clinic, twice the number quit smoking as compared to those who were referred to a smoking cessation clinic. There was no worsening of psychiatric symptoms connected to quitting smoking. In fact, a study from Brown University found quitting makes people happier. The study involved a group of 200 plus smokers who wanted to quit. They got a nicotine patch and counseling and then agreed on a quit date. Professor Christopher Kaler led the study. Those people who were the most successful, who quit and stayed quit throughout the follow-up, came in with relatively low levels of depressive symptoms. In contrast, Kaler found that people who quit and then relapsed were in better moods when they didn't smoke and then became depressed when they went back to smoking. If anything, people are feeling better when they're not smoking compared to when they are. Kaler said he hopes the study inspires people to stop smoking, especially when they realize that quitting can lead to a happier, healthier life and not long-term deprivation. Carol Pearson, VOA News. Well, uh, Lino, such a very informative piece, but uh, this new information actually underscores the fact that uh, everybody should really keep away from cigarette smoking. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it is so clear with this study and so many other studies that have shown clearly that uh, smoking is bad for you. But uh, the question is, why are there still people smoking? You know, when we talk about uh, where we come from, uh, Africa, the smoking has always been associated with being in a kind of a class. And uh, younger people pick up the habit, women even more. You're seeing those in, you know, in bars and clubs. People think it's trendy. It is fashionable it's you know it's a, it's a kind of a, tra a fashionable thing to to be seen smoking yes it but is unfortunate but you know that in general experts say that Africa has relatively low tobacco use prevalence rates uh, but however it is increasing over the years and uh, they say that in about 12 years uh, Africa is ex expected to double its tobacco use and just like you said many of the smokers the new smokers are the youth uh, under yeah. 20 uh, years old so yeah. it is uh, this is uh, one thing you don't want to see increase because the effects are manifested later on in life perhaps in their 40s or 50s so you don't want to go there yes yeah. yes I well just... let's hope everybody gets a message hey before we go have special respect to the African rat yes how about, how about those rats <laughs> <laughs> yeah no joke we have to respect them for what they can do for Definitely. science well, thanks a lot, Lino, for sure. joining us today. Now, be sure to watch for Lino Mudu every Tuesday and Thursday for the latest health news in Africa right here on In Focus. It's time to